Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Mitchell with my uh, interesting reoperative parathyroid surgical case of the week. Um, the case for this week involves a 77-year-old woman who splits her time between New York City and uh, Southern Florida. Uh, this patient in 2020 actually consulted with us for surgery, but uh, the pandemic <laughs> occurred and she ended up stuck in New York and ended up having surgery there. Uh, unfortunately, her surgery was unsuccessful. Uh, during this operation, her surgeon removed both of her upper parathyroid glands. Uh, when I reviewed the pathology report, these two glands uh, each weighed about 10 milligrams, which is pretty tiny. Um, and even though he called these abnormal glands, uh, uh, 10 milligrams, uh, is a, that's a normal, very small parathyroid gland. So I, I suspect that these were normal glands that were removed. The operative report also states that both lower parathyroid glands were clearly identified and were normal. Uh, intraoperative parathyroid hormone levels were measured, which is what most surgeons uh, outside of this practice do uh, as a way of predicting cure, and uh, those levels did not drop at all. Uh, despite this, the surgeon uh, decided to uh, terminate the operation and, and closed, and unfortunately the patient uh, continued to have clear evidence of hyperparathyroidism. Um, as pandemic-related uh, restrictions eased up, uh, the patient uh, found her way back down to Florida and reconsulted with us, and uh, we discussed the case and reviewed all of the details of her surgery. Um, unlike first-time operations for us where we don't really uh, care too much about the results of imaging tests, which frankly are not very good for parathyroid disease, in reoperative cases like hers, they're a bit more important. We uh, prefer to have a pretty clear understanding of which gland we're going after or which of her glands is her problem. In this case, we knew at least that it was one of her lower glands as both upper glands were removed. Um, but in general, uh, our approach is to do imaging uh, with the patient at our center, discuss the findings, and then decide whether to proceed with surgery or not. Uh, we brought her to our center and performed our traditional imaging, which is a technetium sesame B scan. Her sesame B scan uh, was not very revealing. It didn't really show a uh, clear, uh, enlarged, or abnormal right lower or left lower parathyroid gland. Uh, we reviewed those findings, and then I performed an ultrasound uh, in the preoperative area. During that ultrasound, uh, I could see pretty clearly um, an enlarged right lower parathyroid adenoma. Uh, and based on those findings, I felt confident, confident that we could uh, take over the operating room and cure her of her disease, which we did. Okay. So this is the sesame B scan that we obtained for this patient, and uh, a couple things to point out. Um, areas that the, of the body that take uh, the tracer that we use up include the liver, which you see here. This is the heart. A couple of dark spots up here are salivary gland tissue, uh, which also takes this tracer up. And here you see the thyroid gland. Um, we're looking for areas of increased uptake, darker spots, and you really don't see um, anything significant to suggest the, the location of the abnormal parathyroid gland in this particular scan. Uh, so these are a couple of uh, images from the ultrasound that I performed on this patient. Um, and to try to orient you here a little bit, um, uh, what you're looking at are transverse cuts through this patient's neck. This is the right side of the neck. And the orientation here is like this patient's head is in the screen and her feet are sticking out at us this way. So she's laying like this, and these are transverse cuts through her neck. You're looking up into her neck from below. So just to point out some anatomy here, because uh, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you looking at this, but this is the trachea here. This is the right thyroid lobe right here. Okay, this is all thyroid tissue. This is the carotid artery here. Uh, I'm gonna scroll to another uh, picture. Now, abnormal parathyroid glands look like the carotid artery. They're dark on ultrasound, and so that's what we're looking for. Uh, this is a bit lower. This is the very lower part of her thyroid. Carotid is here. Here's the trachea, and here you see this dark mass, which is very typical in appearance of an abnormal parathyroid gland. Uh, this is an embryologic right lower parathyroid gland. This is another image or another, uh, another view. This is a, a sagittal view, so the head is to the left, the feet are to the right. This is the thyroid now on its side, and here is her parathyroid tumor. Typical teardrop shaped with a bright rim. Uh, and based on these findings, I knew that we were gonna be able to cure this patient. 
Uh, as with all of these reoperative surgeries, they're more difficult due to um, alteration of the tissue planes and scar tissue from the, from the first operation. But we were able to identify a right lower parathyroid adenoma. Uh, interestingly, this was in a very typical location. This was not an unusual location for a parathyroid gland. Uh, this was removed and uh, she had an uneventful recovery. We checked her parathyroid hormone levels right before surgery and it measured 108. Um, 30 minutes after her operation, we measured it again and it had dropped down to 17, indicating that she was now finally cured of her disease. Uh, she had a number of symptoms from her parathyroid disease, including chronic fatigue, uh, trouble uh, with short-term memory and concentration, and bone and joint pain, and all of these symptoms resolved uh, uh, within several weeks of her operation. She was quite happy. Uh, here, again, is another example uh, of a patient who underwent an operation probably by a, a relatively inexperienced surgeon who likely did his best um, but wasn't successful. And fortunately, this woman uh, knew of our center and realized that there was an, uh, an option for her despite her unsuccessful surgery, and she was able to get cured. Uh, keep this in mind if you're a patient who's had an uns unsuccessful parathyroid operation, or maybe even if you're a doctor who takes care of patients who have this problem. If they've had an unsuccessful surgery, or you have, uh, there are options for you, uh, and most likely you can be cured of your disease. Keep that in mind.